everybody? Yes, yes, my family. Okay, <laughs> I love it. So I was, I was born and raised uh, in Harlem. Yeah, when my parents were very lovely, liberal white people, you know, with beautiful hearts, no savings, and um, <laughs> that is where they raised us. You know, this small rent-controlled apartment in Harlem. Growing up in Harlem was fine. I, I was the only white kid in my elementary school class. Now I don't even think. I cared or even knew what that meant. I just know that it was awkward sometimes. Like one time I was at lunch and my friends are going around the circle, right? And everyone's like, oh, what, were our, what will our rap names be when we grow up and inevitably become rappers? <laughs> and one girl was like, mine would be gangsta slut. I'm like, that's really good. Um, I can't top that, you know? They get to me, I'm like, oh my God, you don't have to do me. Like, I'm not part of this, you know? And they're like, no. We've got an amazing rapper name for you. Your rap name would be Cracker Bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I'm honored. Like, I didn't know you guys respected me. Um, right? And Cracker Bitch, like, obviously, I didn't become a white rapper, but Cracker Bitch123 was my AOL screen name for five years. <laughs> And growing up, like, my dad was this Irish guy from Philly, right? And he had already lived in Harlem for, like, 40 years. And he was very liberal. And when I was growing up, he was super against gentrification. Like, my dad, right? <laughs> and he would take me to all these anti-gentrification protests in Harlem. <laughs> and he'd be like, look, Maggie, look at all these white people. <laughs> Moving into our neighborhood. I was like, Dad, you started it. Like, you are their leader, right? He, he would even make me carry a sign at the protest, and the sign just said this. Check this out. The sign was just, stop. That was it. It was just so vague. So vague. <laughs> and honestly, like, my dad growing up was so interesting. He was very, like, anti-money, almost. Like, he kind of thought, like, rich people were evil. And I was like, yeah, but they go to places for vacation other than Jersey. Anyways, um, oh, yeah, they're evil. They're the worst. Um, but yeah, so like growing up, uh, my brothers were super financially successful, right? And my dad was just like not that impressed, you know? But like in my early 20s, he was so proud of me because I was so broke, you know? And I'd be like, dad, I can't make rent. He's like, had a girl. Uh, don't even pay it. Stick it to the man, you know? And I remember my oldest brother bought his first house, right? And my dad was like, I mean, who cares? <laughs> improv it's pretty cool okay it's pretty cool and then my other brother got a promotion right my dad was like who give a fuck you know maggie got evicted like she she's my favorite so weird so i had no idea that that new york was a wealthy city until i got this scholarship to a private girls high school and those girls were like I thought I was like gossip girl, money, right? So rich. I remember trying to relate to them, right? One girl was like, Ugh, do you ever feel like your nanny is your mom? <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> but I was like, but sometimes I feel like my exterminator is my uncle. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That guy's always around, okay? <laughs> growing into my body. That's family, okay, that? That's a creepy uncle, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, all right. Then even into senior year, like, she's still trying to one-up me and, like, relate to me. She's like, oh, my butler tried to finger me. <laughs> I'm like, girl, that is not a struggle. That's just hot, you know? Like, it's a porn I'd watch, you know what I'm saying? Butler fingering, okay. Uh, it's a category. Um, <laughs> Despite growing up that way, like, I don't know, I stayed close to those rich girls in high school. You know, we're still friends. Because despite my upbringing, like, I want to be rich, too. Uh, I want it, you know? Like, I want to be so rich that my future kids can't tell if their friends are using them or not. <laughs> like, I want my future daughter to be like, Mom, I just feel like Sally only likes me because of our beach house, you know? And I'm going to be like, honey, I was Sally. Uh, <laughs> okay. She's diabolical, just like mommy. Uh, she was my daughter, okay. <laughs> but yeah, but, but in my early 
20s, like I did want to continue to impress my dad by continuing to be poor. So, <laughs> so I say it with me, majored in theater uh, <laughs> at a community college. Uh oh, <laughs> that'll do the trick. So, yeah, having a theater degree, you know, it's a lot like having, say it with me, guys, no degree. So, <laughs> it's similar, right? Like, I remember in my mid 20s, my mom was like, Maggie, like, what are you doing with your life? I'm like, Mom, like, everything. <laughs> I was like, I'm acting, I'm singing, I'm doing stand up, improv. And she's like, Wow, Maggie, that's amazing. I had no idea there were so many ways to not make money. <laughs> and I was like, Honestly, whatever, roomie, you know, like, stop gaslighting me. Okay? Which mom, I'm literally starving. Um, <laughs> oh man, I had a lot of weird jobs, a lot of weird jobs. When I first graduated, um, I worked for this company called Improv for Children. <laughs> and you know, surprise, we did improv for kids, you know? And we would do these like, whose line is it anyway? You guys remember that show, whose line? Yeah, it was very similar to that. We would do these shows, these comedy improv shows at like 8 a.m. for 200 kids from the Bronx who hated us. And, <laughs> I mean, brutal, you know? And they, they hated us so much, they would heckle us. Yeah. I remember doing one show, I'm giving it my all, I'm just like, I'm a robot, right kids, you know? And one girl sitting like right where you're sitting, right? She looks me dead in the eye, she whispers, she goes, you're not funny. <laughs> single show <laughs> like the kids would be like do you guys make any money <laughs> and we'd be like next question um, <laughs> they're like do you guys are you guys on TV we're like next question uh, one kid was like are you guys famous I'm like are you stupid like what like, were you left back yeah it's me Kim Kardashian what like, are we famous <laughs> oh man but I did I did, I did get so like broke in my mid-20s, man. I had to bite the bullet. I had to get a corporate job at one point. Man, I was so sad. I was devastated. I was like, I'm a sellout, you know? And I, I did this corporate job. I worked from home. And because I was working from home, uh, I would really experiment with um, doing drugs all day. Has anybody <laughs> tried that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, check this out. Believe it or not, my performance actually suffered a lot. Um, <laughs> Zoom, right, camera off, titties out, you know, <laughs> titties out, and uh, bong in my mouth, you know, lays chips on my chest, and uh, he's like, Maggie, uh, you've been making a lot of mistakes, and I just blurted out, I was like, we all make mistakes, man, I'm like, whoa, uh, I am too high for this call, you know, like, and then he goes, this boss, he goes, yeah, I don't make mistakes, and that's how I got to where I am, CEO. In my head, I'm like, dude, you do make mistakes because you hired me. You know, like, <laughs> you're an idiot! <laughs> oh, okay. Also, you know what's so weird about working from home for a corporate company is, like, I had a nemesis. <laughs> and this was a remote position. Like, I had never met this woman, right? It was, she would always had her camera off. It was just the sound of her voice and the condescending tone of her emails. And I was just like, Taylor has to die, you know? Like, kill her, you know? I tried to, to form an alliance with another coworker against Taylor. Like, I got in a Zoom with this other chick. I'm like, oh, Taylor. Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> my coworker was like, oh, Taylor, you know, she can be tough sometimes, but she had a really rough childhood. And I was like, oh, I don't give a fuck, you know? Like, I was like, oh, she was a child, now she's an adult, she's un un unable to overcome. What a stupid bitch. Um, I hate her more. Okay. Now I'm going to thank her parents for abusing her. Okay. Uh, too far? Just kidding. Um, anyways, um, but yeah, listen.
listen, I now, luckily, like, I, I make money doing what I love to do, which is so, I'm so grateful. It took a while, but I, I do that now, and I'm just, I'm just so glad that my dad didn't live to see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kidding, again. Um, no, but he did pass away, and I'm dedicating to the set to him, and he loved watching me do stand-up. He would come to see me do stand-up, and he'd be like, what was that? Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's all good, so, um, but yeah. I, Mature. Like, I'm mature, but, like, not really, you know? Like, I turned 30 recently, but, like, I identify as 23, you know? Like, I, I was at a party recently. This other 30-year-old chick comes up to me. She goes, ah, oh, I'm on my third trimester. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm on shrooms, you know? Like, I was like, I'm trying to party, you know? And she was like, back away. You're on drugs, you know? And I'm like, oh, my God, relax. I'm just trying to hook up with you. You know what I mean? Like, it's, don't be a loser. It's a party. Um, I was like, think of it this way. If I kiss you, it might induce the labor. And I'm trying to have an experience tonight. <laughs> it's getting weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyways. Uh, but yeah, so I turned 30 and I had this major existential crisis, right? So, so the only thing you can do in that situation is, um, well, I hooked up with a 25-year-old guy. <laughs> yeah, hold the applause. And uh, <laughs> hooked up with him. He goes... I've never been with an older woman. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna tell myself. <laughs> yeah, so bad. So I was so mad at him for calling me old. So I decided to get back at him. So I, to get back at him, obviously, say it with me, pretended to pass away during sex. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just a very believable heart attack. Spook the little boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, you're gonna call me old, you're gonna call 911, okay? <laughs> I was like, why are women faking orgasms when they can fake cardiac arrest? Who's my thing? Now, obviously, I'm very theatrical, so I was very committed to this fake heart attack. <laughs> so he believed me, right? He was like, oh my God, like, are you okay, ma'am? Uh... <laughs> I want to scare him, you know? So I was like, I'm fine, you know? And, like I did my classic demon awakening bit, you know? And he just came instantly. It's like, oh God. These Gen Z boys, they just violently ejaculate. Any scary thing. Uh, so gross. Oh, you guys are really fun. Oh my God. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I mentioned that I'm, I'm into shrooms. Yeah. Now, I think that's because I, I have depression. Plot twist. You guys didn't see it coming. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, have depression. And, um, you know, shrooms can be helpful for that. And I, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but you can't experience the full effects of shrooms if you're on antidepressants. Yeah. When I learned that, I immediately went off all my meds. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to miss out on tripping just so I could not kill myself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Right? When you're 25, it's very hard to know if you're clinically depressed or just leading an objectively horrible life. You know? <laughs> you're like, wait, 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 am I mentally ill or am I just fucking a guy who works at Planet Fitness? Like, I don't know. Like, who, who has to say, right? Uh, I do date a lot, though. Like, I'm out in these streets, you know, trying. <laughs> but, you know, you have to act normal on dates. Like, you can't act like this. <laughs> no, you guys, my best friends. Um... <laughs> Acting normal, <laughs> and this guy goes, oh, "My ex was crazy," and I had to be like, ah. <laughs> Ooh, "Can't relate," you know? <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Yeah, yeah," she had a lot of emotional problems. I'm like, "Oh, oh. <laughs> what a dumb bitch." <laughs> She was diagnosed as bipolar. Isn't that annoying? <laughs> and I was like, mm, that's crazy. <laughs> I was never diagnosed as bipolar last year. Um, <laughs> like by the end of the date, I just wanted to be like, surprise, it's me. <laughs> 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 
Oh, but I do try to keep it chill on the first day. I do. I try to. Like, if a guy's like, oh, I'm not looking for anything serious. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, me neither. I'm just looking for a casual wedding. <laughs> like, 75 guest max, you know? The bridesmaids, they can wear converse. I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah. I was like, dude, we don't even have to hire entertainment. All my exes are magicians, you know? <laughs> your opinion. I'm the most talented guy you've ever dated. And I was like, you're not. <laughs> because I've dated four magicians. Like, I was like, do you even know what's behind my ear? No, you don't. You don't. I was like, have you ever pulled a $20 bill out of one of my holes? No, you haven't. That's a gift. Yeah. <laughs> like, one of the magicians, when he broke up with me, he actually disappeared. I was like, that was impressive, you know? I was like, wait, you forgot your scarves! Um, yeah. I know, I was like, what am I supposed to do with this rabbit? Okay, um... So gross. <laughs> so I've established that I'm a little crazy. And, uh, so, and I love people, you know, I, I love, you know, being in theater and being around people. And during the pandemic, man, I got so lonely, you know? I sent a lot of nudes. <laughs> Has anyone here seen them? I just feel like... <laughs> that I was sending to this guy that I liked at the time. You know, I'm naked, crying. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, if you don't fuck me, they're gonna shoot me. <laughs> and my son. Uh, <laughs> he texts me like, you have a son? I'm like, no, I'm not a mother, I'm an artist. Um, <laughs> I also love doing a, a nude video that had like a fatal disease scenario. <laughs> like I'd be like naked, crying again. I'd be like, look at my ass. There's a tumor in it. Um, <laughs> they need your jizz for the chemo. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also loved doing like telenovela nudes, you know? Change it up, right? For these ones, I'd be like running around my apartment, I'd turn the lights off and on, naked, screaming, and I'd just be like, hey, Dios mío! Your penis is big, I'm scared. Uh, for those of you who aren't on Duolingo. Anyways, um, yeah, yeah. So this guy that I was sending these to, you know, I liked him, right? And, and we were talking, he goes, oh, these are awesome, but can you do a really scary one? I want to freak out. I was like, oh, you want to freak out? Yeah, totally. yeah. So for this one, I turn off all the lights. Can't even see me. And it's just the sound of my voice, right? And I'm just like... <laughs> I want to meet your mom. Um, I'm pregnant. It's yours. Uh, he blocked me. Okay, so... <laughs> I think the point of that bit is that I want to be a mom. You know? Um, I want a family. What can I say? I think I'd be a good mom, despite this set. And, uh... I do. You know? I think I'd be very loving. And, you know, my friends are starting to have kids. We're at that stage, right? My best friend had her first baby recently. And she goes, Maggie, are you scared, you know, if you have a kid that you're gonna have postpartum depression? I was like, girl, I've had prepartum depression for like 30 years, you know? Like, how bad can it be, right? <laughs> She's like, yeah, but what if you wanna put your kid in the microwave? I'm like, I've been trying to get in there, you know? Like, it'd be nice to have a buddy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's like, yeah, but what if you get really sad and you start to contemplate death while you're breastfeeding? I'm like, been there. <laughs> like, how many times have I wanted to jump off a bridge while some loser is going to town on my nips? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus, right? My friend's like, yeah, but this would be a baby. And I'm like, no, my 40-year-old ex-boyfriend was a baby, okay? Jeez. <laughs> 
yeah, I mean, I'm in therapy, you know, I'm in therapy, trying to get better, all that. Yeah, I love therapy. I've had a lot of therapists, you know. My least favorite therapist, though, was a white woman. Because white women, you know, they just care too much, you know. Like, this woman would make way too many empathy noises during the session. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, I had a bad date, and she'd be like, oh. No. I'm like, yeah, he was mean to me at the restaurant. And she's like, oh, no. I'm like, yeah, he ghosted me. She's like, oh, you know, I'm like, why is this woman wet for my trauma? What's happening? I was like, I can't tell her that my father passed away. She'll come. Uh, anyway, if you didn't laugh, my dad's going to haunt you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness but yeah no now i actually have a new therapist and she's a spiritual director yeah yeah because it's cheaper than therapy yeah i'm like i guess i believe in god now because it's 50 dollars a session you know like, and she all has all these kooky phrases that she loves to use she's always like oh, don't let anyone activate your shadow and that's when someone's like doing something you used to do but you've grown out of it right I was at this party recently, I go up to this girl, I'm like, excuse me, bitch, you're activating my shadow. <laughs> and she was doing coke, you know, like. <laughs> and I was like, girl, we're in our 30s, this is sad, you know? Like, I feel like coke, is this a coke crowd or, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and, and you know, coke in your 20s is adorable, right? I think it's cool. It's, it's like kind of hot, right? It's like, oh, let's start a business, you know what I mean? Like, in your 30s, it's a little sad, it's like, oh, our business failed, you know? <laughs> like, people in their 30s doing coke, I'm like, don't you wanna be asleep? What is happening? People in their 40s who do coke, I'm like, that's too much, right? I was at a bar recently, these two guys were in their 40s doing coke, and they were trying to start a business. I was like, it's too late, uh, right? They were like furiously drawing on a napkin, and I was looking over their shoulder, and it just said business. <laughs> said sluts, <laughs> money, <laughs> power. <laughs> and I was like, where do I apply? Um, not a bad idea, honestly. Not a bad idea. My, my, my spiritual director is always trying to make me like talk to my inner child. You know, have you ever done inner child work, right? That's where you're supposed to tell your inner child positive things. But when I talk to my inner child, my inner child's always like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Right, it's like a very visual experience. Like my inner child's surrounded by her sassy teen gal pals, right? And my inner child's like, oh my God, guys, this old woman is talking to me. She keeps telling me I'm enough, it's disgusting. My friends are like, ew, ew, how old is she? And my inner child's like, 30 or dead. I don't know, I think she's dead. Um, so bad. Uh, but it's hard, you know, it's hard to get your life together. It really is. Like, especially in New York City, like, oh, I had some rough years in my 20s. Like, I was moving in, out of my, in and out of my parents' house, and I had horrible roommate situations. Like, I lived with this bitch named Linda for, like, three years, okay? I hated her. She hated me, too, right? I, she didn't care for my sloppiness. I didn't care for her personality, you know? <laughs> She'd be like, Maggie, can you please change the water filter? I'm like, Linda, can you please change the sound of your laugh? You know? <laughs> I want to die. Okay. Um, <laughs> she also hated when I brought guys over, which sucks because I was a whore, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's like, I was a 23-year-old little whore. What do you want from me, right? I'd bring a guy over and she'd be like, oh, this is so weird. Like, I don't know him. And I'd be like, neither do I. It's fine. <laughs> Take his annex while I let this mediocre loser rail me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, one time, I brought a guy, one time I brought a guy over twice in one week, right? She goes, oh my God, Maggie, I hear wedding bells. <laughs> I was like, Linda, those were anal beads, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, I'm not even a big anal girl, you know what I mean? It's for the joke, right? If I could go to an anal protest, I would, right? And I'm like, stop torturing women! Okay, um... <laughs> Magicians loved it. Guys, quick impression of me having anal with my ex. Are you ready? Yeah. <sighs> Happy birthday! That's it. Um, <laughs> just, okay. Uh, <laughs> horrifying. Oh my goodness. Um, but now I kind of have my life together. Like, I have my life together. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so supportive. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I have my first like one bedroom apartment in New York City. Yeah. It's hard to get that as a performer, you know what I mean? Like you have to make 40 times the rent, right? You have to have the bank statements, the pay stubs, like tax returns, all this stuff to prove that, right? And by the time you finally get the apartment, you're so proud of yourself because you worked so, so hard at Photoshop. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm a skin artiste, you know? Like, I tricked my landlord, right? My landlord thinks I have 150K in savings <laughs> from comedy. I'm like, can he read? What is happening? <laughs> Also, that's a joke for those people online who are going to call me a criminal. Anyways, <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Um, but yeah, now I'm kind of at the stage where I'm like, okay, I feel like, you know, I've got the apartment. I've like following my dreams. I'm doing everything I like to do. And uh, now, next stop, husband. <sighs> Anyone here want a wife? Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I want a husband. I definitely do. I want to be married. But I feel like I can't get everything from one man. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I need one guy to bang me, you know, <laughs> one guy to cook for me. Thank you. <laughs> There's more. And uh, one guy to build my furniture, one guy to make me laugh, right? I'm like, damn, am I looking for a husband or am I looking for a staff? I don't know. Right? I'm like, am I trying to build a relationship or am I trying to build an LLC empire? You know? right? So I put that joke on the internet, right? Somebody commented, they go, oh, that's slavery. <laughs> I was like, I commented back, I was like, what if it's all white men? <laughs> That's fine. Um, <laughs> what? Internet's so weird. Okay. Um, but you know what? I'm not surprised that like I'm not married. You know, I get it. Like I'm not amazing in bed, you know? I don't have what it takes. I'm weak. <laughs> I know this because last time I had sex on top, the guy just removed me, you know? He was like, you're sweating in a weird way. Uh, <laughs> and afterwards I was like, oh my God, that was so crazy back there. <laughs> the way I couldn't breathe, you know? <laughs> and he was like, it's all good, babe. He looks me dead in the eye, he goes, it's all good. You know what you have? You know what I think you have? And I was like, oh my God, like, what do I have? And he was like, scoliosis. Uh, <laughs> Uh, see a doctor. <laughs> Saw a doctor. Had it. Okay. Um, brutal. <laughs> Not great for my self-esteem, right? It kept, it's getting better. It's getting better. But, I, you know, I, I did a good thing, though, recently. I quit smoking weed. I quit smoking weed. Thank you. You know, I, in my 20s, I loved it. I loved weed. I would take a hit of a joint in my 20s. I'd be like, oh, everyone wants to fuck me. You know, like, so delusional. Turn 30, my brain kind of broke, right? And now I take a hit of a joint. I'm just like, oh, everyone wants to kill me. You know, like, I'm so paranoid, right? I was so high at a party recently that I had to go into the bathroom and do basic affirmations. <laughs> right? I was looking in the mirror. I was just like, you? were invited. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you organized this, okay? Like, I was like, you live here, okay? Like, 